And hello everybody. Welcome to Papa's Projects. I want to thank you for joining me today. Let's see if I can get up here in the camera a little better. <clears throat> today, as you've seen in the title, we are going to... Well, hello Ryan, how are you? Uh, today we are going to do uh, a little work on a power supply. My power supply, right after I made that last little tidbit of a video on the big printer, um, it went out on me. I'm not surprised because it's a very, very old computer power supply and it was a very small one anyway. It was, let me see here, uh, trying to look and see how big it was. It was a small one. Hundred and ten watts. But it did the job. It was working. Um, and, and it's been working, you know, for all my testing purposes since I started the project out in the garage, so... It was just a small little 110 watt. Probably out of an old Packard Bell or something. Anyway, she's toast. So we got to do another one. And I had another one laying around, so we're going to work on it. This one's a little bit bigger. I don't know where I picked it up, but somebody's got marked on here that it was good in... April of 2003 I did put a meter on it last night to make sure it was good before I started this process and waste my time but this is this is a 250 watt much bigger I'm glad that one went out I was probably the next day was going to print a box to mount that power supply and my switch into it hey Tom good to see you man um, yeah I was getting ready to design and print the box to put on the end of it to mount my switch and I was also going to put and I still am but now I'm going to make the box fit, fit this power supply um, I'm also going to put my solid state relay because I got the 110 volt bed I'm going to mount that in the box that I designed. That'll be coming up after Murph. I'm not going to do much between now and Murph. I'm going to tie up some other loose ends around the house and stuff. So, not going to be a lot going on around here as far as 3D printing. Uh, currently, I am printing, you can see there on the ender, uh, I redesigned the motor mounts because my original motor mounts were off a couple millimeters they were out too far a couple millimeters and I think they were forward too far a couple millimeters which made my lead screws taper in still worked because I have flexible couplings on them but the closer down to the bottom you got the more of a bind I had so it was just a problem I was going to address anyway. So hopefully this new version will take care of that problem. I'm going to check and see if my alignment is proper. I will do a mirror image and make one for the other side. And also it raises it up about 700, 6 or 700 millimeters. I haven't measured it, but raises it up quite a bit and gives me a lot more capacity. So, overall, I think it's going to be a much better design. Time will tell. So, the first thing I want to do, let me switch screens over here. Uh, let me, I'm going to get the keyboard out of the way. Try a little bit of a different layout here so you guys can see what's going on. Hopefully, this will work out okay. I'll just set the keyboard down there. Not much to it, just a basic computer power supply. It's got a whole bunch of wires that we don't need. 
but it has the voltages we do need. I could buy uh, just a standard power supply for 15 bucks, but I don't need to. This one will work just fine. And this gives me an added benefit. Um, in one of my past videos, I told you that I swiped some uh, cooling fans for my control boards from laptop cooling units. And they run off of a USB, so they're 5 volts. So the standard power supply that you buy, like off of Xyltech, it'll give you a 12 or a 24 volt um, feed but I would have to put a buck converter or something in it to knock it down to 5 volts to run the cooling fans. By using this, it was free. One, two, it gives me my 12 volts for the control boards, gives me 12 volts for um, any MOSFETs if I need to use any MOSFETs, um, and like the SSR, the solid state relay. So I'll have the 12 volts to run that and it's more than enough power since my bed's 110 but it's also going to give me my 5 volts for uh, to run those fans so I don't need the buck converter I don't have to create anything so basically what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to prep this and get rid of some of the crap I don't need test it and verify that it's going to work and see if I can get that uh, controller back up and make the machine move again. That's my goal for this video. It's not going to be a real long one. Just something that needs to be done. So we're going to start out opening this thing up. Um, I also do want to take the time to say thanks. I don't think you're in here, Emily, but uh, I did notice that I had a sub from you, uh, Amazon Prime sub, that happened apparently when I was offline, so thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Gets me closer to my goal. Still trying to get my goal. For some reason, the sub goal doesn't update automatically. I still got an issue to figure out on uh, Streamlabs. But I'll get there. Okay, I got a couple screws here. Just want to see if we can get this thing, trim some of the fat out of it, and get it up and running. And for somebody that wants to go this route, this will be a good little video. A lot of times people have computers just laying around, or they'll throw them in the trash, and if the power supplies work at all, don't throw the... Uh, there's a lot of things you can save out of there that you can use for 3D printing, like the fans, the power supplies, heat sinks. Um, you, could, you could even use some of the wiring harnesses. Well, that's a little bit dirty, but I would expect that since it's, what did I say, 2003? Yeah. The last time somebody checked it. Um, let me grab a can of air and clean that out real quick. Alright. Watch your eyeballs, everybody. a little better. So, 
mainly what we're going to be concerned about is these lines right here this is going to be the main uh, item that we're going to be concerned with and what we have is the yellow which is 12 volts blacks are the the uh, negative the common and red is 5 volts so I will run the yellows to uh, feed the board and yellows to feed there's two places on the ramps board that you gotta feed 12 volts one for the board itself and one for your heated bed and nozzle or MOSFETs or SSRs whatever you need so we're gonna feed those and then I'm gonna run one I'm gonna run this one red line to uh, run my two fans I don't I haven't even verified that the fans work so hopefully they do I'm gonna pray that luck's on my side and they actually work so here are the main lines that I'm gonna run and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull this other yellow alright so that gives me two yellows, two blacks and a red. I probably ought to have one more black. That way I can run a red and a black to my fans. So we'll cut one more black out of there. Alright. So that's what we got to work with. Yellow and a black for the control boards, the ramps boards. A red and a black for my fans. A yellow and a black for a 12 volt hotbed, nozzle, um, heater block, or MOSFET or SSR. So those are the main ones we're going to be concerned about. We're going to save those, keep those separate. Almost everything else we can eliminate and clean up. Um, because we don't need it. Now, sometimes it's a little bit hard to get in here and get some of these out, but I know the oranges, they can go. So I'm just going to clip these right here at the board so we can remove them and get them out of the way. They pack the stuff in here pretty dang tight. Come on, I got one more orange there to get. Alright, I think I got it. Okay. There's one. Now that one's not unhook that's a red. Yeah. There's another orange one out. There's another orange one out. Okay, so there's our orange. Um we should not need this white one. Really, there's only two more that we're going to need, and that is the green which I have already cut loose from the plug here on the 20, what is this, a 20 or 24 pin plug? This is probably a 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, yeah, this is a 20, so this is pretty old. Um, does it have the 4 pin? No. Yeah, this is pretty old. This is before the 24 pin ones. But we need the green. So we sure don't want to cut that. 
and we're gonna need one more black and I'd already cut one black one to go with it I actually cut the one that was right beside it so these two we're going to keep separate too all right now let's see if we can trim the rest of this junk out of here those two are out there's a purple where's that purple going it's going right here so purple can go and that blue one can go okay and we got a gray one that can go Let's see now comes the harder part let me cut this wire tie off here make it a little easier to separate and we can ditch that I thought about using actually these connectors here you get under the camera there these connectors here that go to your drives I thought about I actually have several in a box over on the other side. Over in the other house, actually. Let me see if I got it. When all that commotion was going on about the Ender Threes and and their plugs getting hot and all that stuff, I don't know what the amp rating is on these plugs, but I thought about giving it a try if I could find a male and a female, which I know they have because they have adapters. Uh, they have adapters that'll take it from the big pins down to the little pins and I probably got some over in a box in the basement um, thought about using those for quick connects for motors and stuff actually I'll hang on to that I'm not going to throw that away yet I'll see what I got in my inventory over in the basement okay so those are the ones we're saving that's an orange that can go. This red and black can go. Hopefully I can get to that. So there's one more out, and let's see if I can get this red one out. Yep, that one's right in front. Okay, so there's a whole nother pile gone. See if I can get this strain relief to come out now that I got a few wires out. Yep, I did. We take this strain relief off here for now. Well, it's not really a strain relief, it's more of a bushing. Alright, we want to save these wires. And we want to save these wires. And then this yellow figures. Actually, I can. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna untie these just for convenience because it doesn't matter they're all they're all tied to the same header on the board so I just need two yellows and rather than fight and try to cut the yellow that's in the back I've got three yellows left. 
I will cut one yellow in the front and that'll leave me two. Alright. And these still leaves you quite a few good pieces of wire too. Alright, and I'm going to do the same thing with the red. I'm going to cut away the ones in the front and keep the one in the back that's hardest to get to for convenience. So there's one. Two. There's four, and there's one more red. Go ahead and clip them here at this plug so I can pull them all out. One more, two more. Okay, so there's my red. There's my two yellow I'm going to keep. I only need one red. So I'm going to keep the red one here in the back. These other red ones I can cut away. There's one. my red. So I got two 12 volts, one 5 volt. My green and my black here, which actually I'll untie those as well. Let me keep my green. I'll keep my green and then I will take all these black. I got one orange one left back in there be a little tougher to get a hold of. Okay, so we're going to try to reach back in there and snip it. I should have got it. Yep. Alright, so now all we have left is black. In the blacks. There's a lot of them. So I need a black to go with the green, a black to go, I need four blacks. So let's snip a few of them out and then see what we got. hard to get to. Alright, there's one gone. There's one gone. There's one gone. How many we got left? One, two. We can use a couple more. got 
We got another black, a little bitty black. It goes back to that board we need to get rid of. I can get back in there. I need some really skinny little nippers to get back in there. Alright, I think we're good. Pull that one out. Now we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We need to lose two more blacks. And there's another one. All right. So everything else I'll clip out here at the plug so I've got some tails to work with. All right, and there we have it. That thing is uh, a lot thinner. Okay, and now let's put this bushing back in so our wires don't get all nicked up on the edge of the metal. I've got some wire loom out in the garage, but I'm not going to put it on today after I've tested everything and I know what I got to work with. I will uh, put some wire loom around this and dress it up real nice. But right there, we've gotten rid of a lot of the mess. Alright, let me put that cover back on. Maybe. Boy. Yep. Okay. He's all cleaned out. Trimmed all the fat out. We just got the basic wires that we need. Now if I haven't messed anything up, we should have a good power supply again. Alright, and this side. Not sure uh, which direction I pulled that little piece out. Looks like that way. That's another thing that is good to save from PCs. Old PCs, now these are coarse thread, but uh, old PCs are full of 3mm fine thread screws. It worked good for motor mounts and stuff. 
I've got a whole bin full of them. Well, this sure don't like that little bracket. And honestly, I don't think we need it, so. Because I am going to put this into plastic case anyway, so I can mount my switch, so that's irrelevant. Nobody's going to get their finger in it. So we'll just leave that bracket out. get that all the way in there. Hang on. I didn't get that seed that lid seated on there properly. Jumping out to play with the granddaughter. Alright D, have fun. Thanks for coming in. So, hey, hey. Thank you for the bits. I appreciate that. Thanks for stopping in. We are tearing down a power supply to adapt it from a computer to a 3D printer. I'm going to have to loosen the other screws up. Alright, let's make sure we got this seated this time properly. So that has to go under there and behind there. There's that one. And then this side has to go under there. Like so. Much better. Alright. Losing the screws here. She's going back together. Actually, I didn't even notice D jump in there. I missed it. Sorry about that. Okay, now will that bracket fit? I believe it will. We'll go ahead and put it back where it belongs. Should have known something was wrong when the bracket wouldn't fit in there. completes that. Now, with five screws and a pair of wire cutters, we should have a good power supply for the 3D printer. Okay, now, I already told you what the red and the yellow and the blacks are for. 
the green, I'm going to tell you why we saved the green. In this computer power supply, it looks for it looks for a uh, connection from the green wire to ground. So we take a green and we take a black, which I actually got lucky in uh, one of them that I cut for it because I already had it stripped. This is one of them that we ended up saving, so we're good there. So we're going to put a couple spade connectors on here. There's the other one. And now we're going to put a switch in here. And this is what controls the output of the power supply. So you can cut you can cut all the wires and and get it all prepared but if you forget this step or if you're not aware of this step you will actually think that you got a bad power supply and it's not putting anything out and in reality it's not putting anything out because it's not being told to it's looking for this switch circuit to close to tell it because just to, just as it is with a computer, why did I end up with an extra black? Oh no, that's right, three and three. Okay, so we're good. So there's my switch circuit, which I plan on taking and printing a box to extend to this. Some, one direction or another, I haven't decided yet, which probably in here. And I think we're upside down. So it'll be like this. And then I will make a hole for the switch to go on and off. And hang on, let me grab something. I will have to open the power supply back up later when I get a little farther down the line. But here's my solid state relay for the 110 volt bed. And to trigger it, all you need is anywhere from 3 to 32 volts. So I will take 12 volts to trigger it, which will be a yellow and a black one yellow and one black will come actually it'll have to pass through the board so it'll come from the board to here anyway I'm thinking about mounting that right there so it'll also have some cooling some cooling I don't know Somewhere I'm going to mount it there. I'm going to have to put some legs on it so that I can get it up off the floor 
or maybe I need to mount it this way I don't know we'll see just so I can get some good airflow through there but I'm gonna make a box extension to come out so I can put my SSR and my power switch in here and then out of the box it will go over to the control boards on the printer so now the big question is Will she fire up and run the printer? So, I'm going to take one of these 12 volts. black that is not hooked to the switch and let's hook it up to this plug right here that in here okay so now we should be back in business so let me go let me move this stuff out of the way I got a pile here let me switch over to the printer cam and aim that camera over where I'm going to be working and we will check make sure we got voltage and then we will test and see if this was a success. Let's go over to the printer cam and angle it over there. Let's see what we got. sure we got the proper voltage coming out of it. this stuff to fit 
I'm going to move that ender so I've got more room. Put the fans right now. Hopefully, we got our power back. Right. Probably can't see it, but... Back alive, Ed's 3D printer is ready. benefits of me not having set screws in it yet she just started raising the extrusion off so I'm not gonna reset that one. That's not going to get it. Luckily she just separated right here. Raised up. And I would say temporary wire connection over to that motor has come loose. And that pulled out. Grand babies were soldered together. I'm going to have to find my soldering iron and get that permanently buttoned up. Go ahead and try the Y axis. progress but I recovered all the loss from where that power supply went out so we're back at least we're running again let me switch back over to this other screen so sucks that I had to do it but it's done now so and it's a bigger power supply not that it's necessary there's not gonna be any kind of load on it really other than the boards so, 
Maybe later this week I can get some of these connections soldered together and sealed up with some uh, shrink tubing. And because right now I've just got some double pin jumper wires between two cables to get to that far motor. One of the pins had gotten pulled out and I didn't notice. So we'll get all get her all squared up. We'll get her soldered together. Get that wire loom brought in and try to get some cable management done. I need to get a couple more cable chains on it for each of the other two axes. Need to get some 15 millimeter bolts for that x-axis cable chain. It's loose and floppy up there right now. The bolts are too long so it doesn't lock down. Um, Yeah, cable management, that's the biggest thing. And hopefully this motor mount. If this motor mount, if I got it all dialed in right and I get those two printed, then I can start locking some of the things down and putting some set screws in it and start finalizing some of the operations. Uh, I don't think... I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem for the X-axis to put the home limit switch in. The Z axis homing switch. Now that may be a different story. That one's going to require some uh, creativity to get that one mounted in a place where it's not going to get tore up, where it can operate properly. So we're going to have to spend a little time on that, but that'll be in another video. So. I guess for today, that kind of completes all the stuff that I had on the list. Just mainly get that power supply up and running. Hopefully it uh, taught some of, some of you uh, that you can use a power supply from a computer. It's not that hard at all. Uh, most of it is just trimming out some of the extra wires so you don't have the mess. You automatically have the 12 volts, you automatically have the 5 volts, and uh, I think there's actually a 3.3 volts in there if you needed it for like LEDs or anything. I'd have to go back and look, but it seems like one of those wires, the blue one, or I think there was like a purple one. There's one of those wires in there, I believe, that's possibly 3.3 volts. Um, so that you might be able to use for your LEDs if you wanted to add those to your machine. So it's a good option and you can find them anywhere. You can usually get them for free. Um, I guess I'll take all uh, to take this time right now. I'll just tell you thank you very much for your support and thank you for taking time out of your day to come spend with me while I work on my projects. Um, I'm not going to have a lot more going this week. And getting ready for Murph. We'll be going to Murph this weekend. I'll be up there Saturday when they open and I'll stay till they close probably. And then Sunday I'll be headed home. I'm kind of excited to get up there and meet a lot of the people that uh, I talk to on here and other channels. Looking forward to that. It's only four days away so Hope to see you up there. Hope everybody can make it and I will be talking to you soon and if you're not at Murph I will definitely see you in the next video. So, thanks for stopping by. Go out there and have some fun and stay safe. Bye-bye.